Hey, hey friends, it's Therese and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my eclipse vlog. It is currently Monday. I have actually read quite a bit of the book. I'm about a hundred so pages in. I am going to try to keep this pretty brief, short vlog. Not because I don't want to vlog this, but because from what I'm gathering so far is that this book is all about Bella facing her guilt. One of my com literary, literary lion commented this on my new moon, but she basically said that, said that there was an intent to introduce a love triangle, but there was, oh, that they tried to introduce a love triangle, but there was no real stakes. There was no actual plan, which I agree with. And I don't want to comment on the love triangle. And I don't want to comment on the love triangle because there isn't one. It's not very developed, and this book with this love triangle is literally all Bella dealing with her guilt. And I'd rather put a lot of the other focus on the use of the Quileutes as a backdrop to make the Cullens look exponentially great. The confederacy issue with a lot of vampirism in America, as well as the total lack, lack of agency that a lot of the girls in this book tends to have. So I will go ahead, I'm going to take a shower because um, if you guys don't know, I supposed to have my notion video up today and somehow it got lost in exporting or what but it deleted like a good minute of video so it only had like my face in there but not the actual notion video so I had to go in and like fix all that which sounds like it should have been easier but I somehow my brain didn't save the project I had to go in with the finished video and it was a lot of things but it was a lot easier than I thought so I have to it's exporting right now um, but I'm gonna go take a shower and feel a little less icky with my day but um yeah now Wednesday um, I haven't had the chance to I did read quite a bit um, these past few days but I haven't had a lot to report I suppose it's the best way I can put it um, I just got done with therapy after work and I bought two books so we all know how that went um, took some Instagram photos and a TikTok video that is saving drafts that I will post for tomorrow but I am here to update y'all on the book so far Let's discuss the imprinting thing because I stopped right before we get to Jasper's little bit So I will be reading for a little bit Well in a little bit But um Jasper no imprinting so it's very obvious that Fimeyer did not think it think it out in the slightest at all She definitely did just use it as a device to save reconnaissance in the fourth book because by law um, they can't kill family when they've been imprinted on. So by law, they save Renesmee that way, but she doesn't realize how much the description is grooming. Um, I'm pretty sure I covered this, but basically, um, the process of it is basically grooming. I really did think I covered this. Um, I will check back, and if I did, I'll, I'll cover it later. But... Let's move on to Jasper. Now, this is something I did research on because it's something that a couple friends and, uh, and myself had had questions in regards to why a lot of white authors tend to make their vampires confederate soldiers or slave owners. We see that here. We see that in the Vampire Diaries and I in True Blood, I believe he was also a confederate soldier. And then in Interview with the Vampire, which I have not read, I did Google it though. The got the main guy, the, the vampire, owned slaves that he can drink blood from. And from what I'm seeing, there isn't much of a historical view on it as it is more of a, col a colonial view. So vampires are typically described at least as beautiful, they're pale, they're very compelling, they are a very dominating presence. So because of those characteristics, or at least they dominate the lesser species, in this case, humans. So and with this description, it would make sense for them to be um, white and to be in the South because that dominating presence tends to, you know, um, 
imply that there's some power imbalance and that you know vampires are stronger and more powerful and they think of they look down on lesser species such as humans so i guess in this case it makes sense that vampires m make sense it doesn't make sense it's a very racist thing but in, in this situation it makes sense that vampires would be part of the confederacy because a lot of the white slave owners look down on their black slaves not the best thing um, it's also a very western and like i said colonial view on vampires because as we have seen both in twilight because it is mentioned which i will get back to that in a second and in other mythologies such as africa asia south america vampires exist literally everywhere they are existing in planes outside of this outside of just the western perspective moving back to that stephanie meyer's idea of like um how only white people can be vampires because of the whole science thing doesn't line up with the fact that she does mention the Danag in this specific area. I believe we do have Brazilian vampires that we see in the in Breaking Dawn, so it's not lining up with her own lore, but the Danag in the Philippines. Now, you're going to tell me that the Filipinos saw white people and didn't do anything? Like I don't know what y'all have known about the Philippines, but we have a history of kicking and or killing dominating white people in history. Um, we have, I believe, who was it the, the one that would be headed? Oh, here we go. Magellan. Yep, that sounds about right. I'm, to boot, didn't, I believe we also ended up kicking out Taft, I want to say, like his last phrase. I don't think we kicked him out personally. I think he was run off by war and stuff but i think his last word was he was going to come back from the for the philippines and yeah so you're, you're gonna tell me that just because some white people gave us food we were like yeah they're fine going off of more of stephanie's lore which is also very problematic she, a lot of people were commenting on the fact that edward is like 108 ish and he's going back for a 17 year old so Stephanie, I have mentioned this, rebutted this and said that technically Edward's brain is frozen at 17. Now, in Jasper's perspective, would that make him racist? Because then that means all of his viewpoints and his thoughts are frozen, which involve his views on race. Which is unfortunate, but it would make sense considering how... Um, Bella does mention that Jasper seems to be really only there for Alice. He doesn't have much of a commitment to the lifestyle or the other people. He's just there because of Alice. So it would kind of make sense that, you know, he would be like, he would still hold those things. It's a little disgusting, but it's also never mentioned in the books prior or after. Which is also a problem because this is another thing that happens is that it's like, oh yeah, they were Confederate soldiers and then you're sitting there like, I beg your pardon. Um, it is touched on in Vampire Diaries. Damon does say that he leaves the military or the Confederate Army because he doesn't line up with their values, but it's a very vague thing and it's never brought up again. But Jasper, it's never brought up. So it's a little not the biggest fan of that because it doesn't make sense. Um, it doesn't really line up either. But we can discuss that more in theory after I read the chapter regarding his vampirism. Um, I'm about halfway through the book. I should, I want to be able to finish this by tomorrow because it has to go up on Friday. It's going to be a very short vlog because there's not a lot to report. A lot of, like I said, the book is just Bella being guilty and then all that stuff. So I'll catch up with y'all in a little bit. I do need to film B-roll, but I don't know where I'm going to film the B-roll, so editing Therese here on the phone. I realized I never talked about the whole imprinting and grooming thing. Um, but basically, if you imprint on someone young, which I don't understand why, I really, I don't, like, I, under, I understand it's supposed to save Renaissance from being killed by the wolves because by law they cannot kill someone's imprint or their family. Um, but then there's the whole spiel where it's like, she'll, he'll be a brother, then a best friend, then a lover? Can we just discuss that? Um, I feel like, again, this should have been an editor sitting there and being like, there's a better way to fix this. 
it's a better way to adjust this and make it so it makes sense and doesn't come off as creepy because the only way this can't be creepy is if like say quill and jake left renesme and claire alone from 2 to 18. and maybe came every now and again to like drop off a present or have dinner with them just so the the relationship is still there but for them to be like yeah it's because like you know this is just how it is it just doesn't sit right with me and it does seem very groomy because like you he's literally grooming this child to set, eventually accept him as a lover i just i don't know where stephanie was going with this there, sh there would have been a better way to protect renesme and there would have been better ways to adjust the imprinting thing and again it's more just negative stereotypes that by men are essentially predatory and i don't I don't know why Stephanie's editors didn't just pause and think about this. Because like lines have to be drawn at some point and they just never did. Okay, it just got to the part where where Jake kissed her without her consent. Typically, I'd be like, yeah, no, like, Jake's trash, I get it. I vote we give Jake some slack. Before y'all come for me, I have a headache, so if I don't sound the most eloquent, I'm sorry. But let's put it this way. So everything that the Quileutes are, reason for their existence, is to be the exact opposite of the Cullens where the Cullens are all about self-control and restraint, which we literally see when Jay, when Edward and Bella are kissing a few pages before she goes to the tulip push. He's like, no, I have to be controlled. We see that later when he talks about how he doesn't want to have sex because he's old fashioned. He wants to be married first and all this fun stuff. So Jacob is supposed to be the exact opposite of that. He's supposed to be impulsive and rude and blunt, impolite, reckless and not asking for consent he's also 16 which is very which we don't see a lot considering he is described as a 25 year old stuck in a 16 year old's body or a 16 year old's head in a 25 year old's body he is over sexualized he is thought to be an adult and more capable of his decisions he's 16 never been in a relationship the girl he loves loves someone else and led him on um, not only that, but the reason for him even kissing her in the first place, knowing now that they're designed to be opposites of each other to make Edward look better, not the best. So I'm going to cut Jacob some slack because he deserves it. Do I agree with the fact that he still kissed her without her consent? No. Do I like the fact that Charlie was like good for you, congratulated him, um, even though Bella broke her hand punching him? No. But I am going to cut him some slack because he wasn't written fairly. There wasn't a chance for him in hell to ever be with Bella. And the only reason he's there is to juxtapose the fact that Edward is this picturesque, perfect being who thinks of Bella all the time, is a gentleman at heart and won't ever touch her inappropriately until it is time. Um, whereas Jacob is selfish and a 16 year old. Edward's also been around for 100 years. So I'm going to cut him some slack. I think had Stephanie not gone this route and used the most exact parallels of the um, Cullens, we probably would have seen more. But yeah, I'm going to get back to reading and then I'm going to go. I'm making dinner and I'm just going to have some meatballs because I 
I'm not feeling super hungry, but I need to eat because I can feel it in my head. Um, but yeah, I'll catch up with you guys when I am about halfway through my halfway point. Um, I don't know when that is, but you know, let me see. I'll probably read into like chapter 19, so like another 50 or so pages. Um, I think this is probably a good enough chunk for me to finish for the rest of the day, um, starting tomorrow and then before I start editing. This is going to be a very short vlog, but I'm okay with that because Twilight is a lot and having to read it and rewatch my analyzations over and over again, it's a lot. Alright, it's Thursday. I need to finish the book. <laughs> you know, usual to raise things with this with these reading vlogs this past couple weeks. Um, I need to finish the book. Um, I think I'm about a little under 100 pages left, so I should be able to read it within the hour, edit, and then get this all up and going. <sighs> but I have so much to say, but also nothing to say. It's just... Okay. Let's kind of discuss. We see this a bit more in Breaking Dawn, so I'm not going to get too much into it, but let's just kind of discuss how if you don't fit the mold of a motherly or feminine woman or someone who is capable of giving birth, you're kind of outed. Specifically Rosalie and Leah. Now Rosalie has a very strong personality. We've seen this in the past. Um, she likes to fix cars. She is like a swimsuit model kind of gorgeous like if i could put her in modern day Gigi hadid comes to mind um just like very effortless kind of chic but still like you, you feel intimidated by her um like i said she likes to fix cars her boyfriend is emmett so it does imply that she ha she is able to keep up with the boys a little bit but then we also have leah on the other hand who is forced into this position as being a werewolf, stuck having to share her most intimate and painful thoughts with the rest of the pack, which then ostracizes her from the pack. Like, you can't control your thoughts. Sorry, boys. And turns her kind of into this annoying little sister, despite her being Sam's age. It's just, like, I feel like Stefan, like, if you're not like Alice, who has a use, or Esme, who is motherly, or Bella, who is able to, who is human and can give birth and is, you know, needs to be protected. You're treated as something else. And it it's, doesn't sit right with me. I don't have the right word for it. Like, Rosalie's been treated badly the entire series. Despite her having said her piece, make, owning up to the mistakes she's made. And she doesn't treat Bella terribly, but she doesn't give her, like, the benefit of the... Like, she doesn't give her the respect that Bella probably deserves which is fair like she's rightfully so considering bella puts her entire family at risk for the past like what year that she's known her but then like edward treats her badly alice treats her badly and it's like they have no loyalty toward her same thing with leah like they all know how the mind meld works with being a wolf they know that but then they treat leah terribly because she can't control her own thoughts of a situation that was out of her control and they treat her like some nuisance. We see that a lot, specifically in Breaking Dawn. And we see a lot of Leah's head that it's not, that it's not fair for her. So I just, I, I hate it. I really, I hate it that Stephanie Meyer treats women who don't fit this mold as others. Also, also not a fan of the fact that she perpetuated the whole BIPOC, or un, BIPOC men are unfaithful. Because there's an implication, because Quill is part Maka. He's not supposed to have any Quileute blood in him, and Quileutes are only direct descendants of the original. So that's why they are all like from the same families, they're all somewhat related. Um, but Quill phases, and it's implied that either Embry, Jake, or Sam's father was unfaithful while they were married to their prospective um, wives. I'm not a fan of it. I wish she had kept that out and just mentioned that like, um, no, not, who, it wasn't Quill, cause Quill is, who was it? Cause Quill is old Quillaterra, so he has some in him. But I think it might have, it, was it Embry? I think it was Embry. Yeah, it was Embry. So it implies that, you know, they're not, he wasn't faithful, which is like, I don't like it. I really, it's a disgusting kind of thing that happens. I don't get why it's still a thing, but we will just, I guess, have to deal 
we'll have to deal with the punches as they come. Um, there's a part here where Bella kind of owns up and questions her own her her own desires. Like she asks if she's the worst kind of monster separating her family. I think she mentions it's isn't verbatim, but how she feels like she has no limits, which in case she kind of does. She manipulates the fact that she's squishy and that she needs protection to take Edward away from the fun, from having to protect her because she doesn't. She pulled out the fact that like. She gets super depressed and she'll find her way to the battlefield and it's just, she's a very manipulative person and I don't, it's just not the kind of thing that I like to see. Which again makes sense in terms of like how that reflects on her relationship with Jacob when he manipulates her into kissing him or how, however you may so. And same thing with Edward, it's just she, she is the base, she is the, she is the thing that is similar between these two relationships and it makes sense that if she were to be manipulative that it would I guess smack her back in the f like smack her in the face and then the same thing in the the struggle with the consent in the attempted sex scene you know Edward saying no it's not and he, he, he's as much as I'm like Edward come on I also get the fact that he is a little bit more old-fashioned he was raised with vastly different values and he wants to play it by the book I feel like they should have had this conversation in the first place but that's neither here nor there. But more into that, Bella just doesn't give two shits. She's very much like, no, I want, like, this is what I want. I like the acting hurt. And again, pushing her boundaries and Edward's boundaries to be like, we should have sex now. This is like, if I'll, I'll marry if you have sex. And I'm like, Bella, why? The piece I wanted to get to before I start reading again is that I wish they dived a bit deeper into Edward and Jacob's friendship. I know it's not possible because they're like mortal enemies or whatever, but I would have liked to have seen that friendship start to blossom a little more because I think their personalities are fairly compatible and they're both compatible in the sense they would bicker but then still care for each other at the end of the day. Um, I really wish that was a thing, but that is not. Um, I'm going to go make dinner, um, turn the TV on, and finish reading Eclipse. I'll catch up with you guys if I have anything to report. Okay, I just reached the point where they're in the tent and the fight's happening and Edward's kind of narrating, kind of passing information along to Seth, who passes it along to the wolves. And can I just say, Stephanie's editors should have done that. They should have been like, okay, this is not a fight scene. We need to fix how you write fight scenes. Sent her to a class, had her do some exercises, because literally this weird narration, this weird skipping of fight scenes is so cringe. Like, let's see, um, let's see. They're talking about you, his teeth clenched together. They're supposed to make sure you don't escape. Nice move, Leah. Mm, she's quite fast, he murmured in approval. One of the newborns caught a scent, and Leah took him down before he could even turn. Sam's helping her finish him off. Paul and Jacob got another one, but the others are on the defensive now. They have no idea what to make of us. Both sides are fainting. No, let Sam lead. Stay out of the way, he muttered. Separate them. Don't let them protect each other's backs. Like, what am I- what am I supposed to do with that information? Like, how am I supposed to visualize that? Like, I- I, I almost wish he just- she just left out the narration. And that she was like... He, he, or he was talking to Seth. And not with the- Stephanie's- Stephanie can't write a, f a fight scene, which is fine. But then, her editor should have anticipated that. And found a way to make sure that the fight scene worked. Or that it wasn't this awkward narration, because what the fuck is that? It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> what is this? I don't... Okay. They just ran into Victoria, and this is Bella describing it. Her voice was not that strong, wild, cat-like growl I would have put her with her face and stance. It was soft, it was high. A babyish soprano tinkling. The kind of voice that went with blonde curls and pink bubblegum. It made no sense coming through her bare, glistening teeth. What, what, what does she mean? Babyish, soprano tingling. What does that mean? Tinkling? Cause now I'm imagining like a freaking glockenspiel, like those little, like the instrument, the glockenspiel, the glock. Cause that's the only thing I can think of like babyish and soprano and tinkling. How are you supposed to be afraid of tinkling? 
I'm convinced that everyone who says the editors are going to be hard on you and for your manuscript lied to me. They all lied. All right, I just finished Eclipse. Three out of five stars. It was better than New Moon, but a lot of the things that Stephanie had in there to set up the love triangle just wasn't there, which makes me really sad because Eclipse was actually like my second favorite out of the quartet. So it's like, eh. But again, she's just an author that has a lot of potential, but I feel like her editors just don't love her enough to like tell her to rewrite something or like tell her that they're not gonna agree to letting this get published if she doesn't adjust it. It's just like, there's so much that could go well with the book, but then it just doesn't because her, her editor just didn't stop her. Um, there was no tension between Bella and Jacob. It was just a lot of Bella dealing with the aftermath of her manipulating Jacob and using him. It really m made sense for me as to why Jacob turned out the way that he did because I would be very angry too and very like misdirect that anger and that hurt. Um, so hashtag justice for Jacob Black. I don't have much to say really. I think that pretty much sums it up. I'm really excited to read Breaking Dawn and Breaking Dawn was my favorite out of the quartet. I liked specifically part one because we were in Jacob's head and I feel like that dual perspective to get to understand more of the Quileutes and the wolves was really needed. Now we just got to deal with the overtly strong pro-life propaganda that is in Breaking Dawn, which I did not realize as a young child, but I am realizing it now. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Which y'all should watch because it's a TBR video and it's for Trick or Treatathon, and we have a giveaway. There's a giveaway. Y'all should join the giveaway. But until next time, hopefully you guys are having a wonderful weekend. If not, hopefully the rest of the week gets better for you.